So how do I stop being so judgmental? Hey guys, it's John out here on the back deck on an overcast day. I've already drank my cup of coffee this morning and I thought I'd hop out here and just make this quick video about judgmentalism. We have a natural set of fight or flight responses and they come from our experiences, from what we've learned from our, our parents and our friends, uh, from what we've been told and we, we've chosen to believe. And we have these natural responses. And oftentimes we, we have to discuss and discover for ourselves what we're believing about others. When you think about the idea of judgmentalism or being judgmental, the idea of being judgmental is, is fascinating because of the fact that that means you've set yourself into a position of authority, either morally or um, some other genre or, 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 or category. A lot of times people will put themselves in positions of authority based upon religion or race or gender or sexual preference. Um, these, these are the the boundaries by which we judge others. We've chosen to believe this, and for us, this is our truth, and so I am going to judge anybody who doesn't believe as I do, or look as I do, or love as I do, or look as I love, or love as I do. When it comes down to the idea of judgmentalism, there's a famous quote in the Bible, you know, judge not, yes, lest ye shall be judged, right? Well, when I look at that quote, I find it to be unique in this perspective of, it literally says, judge not lest you shall be judged. But when you think about it from the idea of when I am judging, I am judging myself as judgmental. You know, judge not lest you shall be judged. You are creating an experience of being a divider, someone who is not loving one another, but you are judging to put yourself into a position of moral authority or, or some other authority. But we come by these, these experiences of judgment through our own life experiences and what we've been taught, as I said. So there comes a point where you have to start to look at your life and say, am I, am I one with God? And if I am truly one with God, and everyone's one with God, then there can be no part of God that is less than any other. And to be someone's judge, which is what being judgmental is, is judging someone. To be someone's judge puts you in authority over them. So it's less about them and more about your own personal issues or chosen beliefs that based in a fear, because all judgment is based in those kinds of fears. We, we look at someone of a different color and, you know, maybe our parents were racists or or something of that nature, or maybe, maybe in the in the elementary school you got beat up by a black guy or a black kid, you know. But that one kid knew how to fight, right? But because of that, you may have an underlying belief that all black people are bad, and so you have this judgmental reaction to it. Well, everybody in life has those sort of natural biases. The key is, if you truly want to be, create a loving world and you truly want to come to know God more fully, it comes to, to the, the idea of you have to let go of, of your position of authority because your position of authority is based in fears and anxieties. It's like right now in our political structure. I one time was driving down the road with a guy who believes something entirely different than I, and he spent a good part of a a couple hour drive screaming at me for not believing as he did. And that was his judgment on me for my belief. And I kept saying to him, I'm not going to talk politics with you, but it wouldn't stop. Right. So it comes down to this idea that, that he was judging me for my beliefs. You know, he had, he asked me who I was going to vote for. And I, I made the mistake of telling him, right. <laughs> <laughs> and now I understood why my parents, my mom and my dad, never discussed politics. She was a Democrat and he was a Republican. And so they had an unwritten rule. 
who you voted for was a secret. You don't talk about it. What I found really interesting was when mom found herself able to actually speak freely about her beliefs, she felt so much better, so much more free. Um, and she didn't feel judged anymore. You know, it comes down to you can judge for race, you can ju judge for political things, you, uh, any of those things. But it's the person who's judging who is having the fear based reaction, the fear based response. The person who is judging someone else is staking their position to feel uh, as if they have the authority because if they don't, then they're wrong. And that the fear and the anxiety of being wrong in that situation would be the, the situation of you know, complete uncertainty. When we look at judgment from the aspect of it being that, that primal response, that fight or flight response from our experiences, that means it's all subconscious. That first part is subconscious. You can be very consciously judgmental, but a lot of it, the, the bulk of it is subconscious. And when you, when you sit back and you release the idea that the past is, has sway over my life, realizing nothing changes in the past and that the future is not set, the, you know, the results of my, my beliefs will be coming into my life, not leaving my life. When you come to that perspective, you come to realize that judgmentalism is a total fear response. And when you look at it from that perspective, then you say, okay, what did the Buddha say? The secret to enlightenment is the eradication of fear. So eradicating being judgmental is eradicating fear. It, it's the one step on the, on the pathway to enlightenment. And when you start to pay attention to what you're saying about your present moment, you start to find out where all your biases are, where all your fears lay. And you have the ability to then say, okay, I am no longer doing that. But here's the thing. Your fears are only abated by taking a risk. Because trust is developed by results over time. I remember driving back from Rehoboth Beach to Ohio and being on the Pennsylvania Turnpike with my son. And we had to top off the Jeep and the doors were off and we we're driving along. And my son had to go to the bathroom. So he pulled into a rest stop. And I dropped him off at the door and I drove around to the back of the parking lot because I didn't have to use the restroom. I pulled around to the back of the parking lot and there was a stand of trees there. And underneath those trees were two, two black men who were just hang out in the shade, enjoying the shade. And I came around the corner in my Jeep, which is all lifted and up on big tires and all the fancy bull push bars and roll bars and winches. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and then you look at me and I'm a big burly bearded guy with a beard. So if to judge me from a distance, this is obviously a redneck. <laughs> this is obviously someone who has those sort of perspectives. As I came around that parking lot and came closer to that area that was shaded, I looked over and I saw both of those, those black men get tight in their bodies. I literally saw them inhale, not knowing what was coming next, preparing for something fearful or negative to happen. <clears throat> did they judge me? They judged me from experience. They've had experiences where people treated them in a way that was l not loving at people who look like me. Right. So as I pulled it back there, I, I slowed down and I stopped and I yelled out to the guys. I said, Hey, do you gentlemen mind if I share your shade? And they're like, no, come on in. So I pulled in, I saw them exhale. They come over, we're talking, we're showing them the Jeep. I'm showing them all the stuff that I did do it. And they're really excited and found out where they lived. And I knew where they, I knew the area. They were, they lived in Pittsburgh and I was, I, you know, we had a great conversation. We had no problem. We had no judgment towards each other after, after that risk was abated because what happened was they were in a state of 
holding their air. And when I abated their risk and I made them feel safe, then everything went fine. Everything went fine after that. So you can be judged or you can judge, but all judgment is, all those sort of judgmental things are, is fear. And when you exhale and you release your fear and take a loving action, their fear goes away. Their judgment goes away. If they continue to judge, it's because they're locked into their belief and they, they have to, they feel powerful in their belief. And so they judge everyone else because if they're not right, they don't feel powerful anymore. And so when you look at the idea of judgment or judgmentalism, realize that everyone's equal. There's no one less than you. There's no one more than you. And no one has the right to judge somebody. Now, let's talk about another aspect of this. You can judge actions. So, for instance, I've done several videos now on Doreen Virtue. And let me just say this. The reason I do videos on Doreen Virtue is because people keep asking me questions about Doreen Virtue. In every video I've ever done about Doreen Virtue, I said, spirituality is a personal journey. You know, it's her journey. She's allowed to have it. She's allowed to live it. The only issue that I, that I had with, with Doreen Virtue was her using fear and anxiety to scare people to believe as she did. So I have no problem with her being a Christian. I have no problem with her be, being a very devout Christian. I have a real issue with scaring people. I have a real issue with trying to convince people to believe as you do because you have chosen that your way is the only way and your way is the right way. And so I have to scare people who don't believe as I do. I don't have to like the actions and I can judge the actions as, as inappropriate, but I don't judge her for her beliefs. Judgment of an individual is very different from judging the actions. You know, I can look at a murderer and say, that's a, I judge the fact that he killed that person, but I can also look at that same murder, murder and realize that, you know, his circumstances, Stances, his poverty, his, his lack of love or loving parents or some fear-based construct brought him to where he is to create this heinous act, which I judge. But I can look at him from the perspective of he doesn't need anything but to feel safe and, and loved and abundant. If he had that, no murder would have happened, right? feel if you've been accepted by the by the community so i'm not i don't judge him personally i i look at the situation from the perspective of fear you know my my friend who was screaming at me in the car that was just his fear right and that's okay that's okay he can have his fears right i don't judge him personally for it you know Putting myself in that situation again might be a little further away, but <laughs> um, but the idea of of being in a situation where where you can choose to not be judgmental and you can choose to let people go, uh, be live their life and be who they are, as long as they're not harming another, you know, it, that's fine. So I guess this is my talk on judgment and judgmentalism. It goes both ways. But the way, only way it stops is when you yourself choose to stop being judgmental. And that's easy enough to do. Exhale, release the fear associated with it, and look at everyone as an equal. And that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.